Reference Wednesday. Here we go then. Try and actually observe instead of going really, really fast today. So, today's gesture, and I'm trying to focus on dynamic poses to help you level up your art currently drawing a very strong looking female in a pack from graffiti studio and uh, she's holding a big old sword I think I've done that arm too big Do, do, do. I'm not going to be covering perspective or anything in this video. It's just simply kind of I'm using references and I'm just going to sketch through. No time frame or anything. It's just simply for, well, fun and practice, I guess. Do, do, do. A very deep concave on her back. I'm gonna try and focus and lay that in. Very muscular back too. I'm very jealous of her physique. She is strong. I think the name of this graffiti studio pack is Gesture Drawing. A dynamic gesture drawing. It's been a long time since I bought her. I can't remember what it's called it off the top of my head. But this video is going to be a bit more relaxed. Laid back. Going to have some music on. Chill. And then you can kind of try and draw alongside me with your personal references. Treat this kind of like your very own life drawing session, I guess. And try and help each other out in the comment section if you're having trouble with anything. And I'll also read them comments and try and help where I can. If you're struggling with any sort of perspective or anything like that, I've got two videos already up on that exact thing. Which should help you if that's the type of thing you're struggling with right now in your art journey. I'm going to make this little bump a little bit smaller so I can get the breast in. I've Overestimated the amount of rib cage to belly and obliques there. So the bottom of the breast kind of rolls in here and then overlaps like that. And then I'm going to draw in the. She's got like a sports bra on. I'm going to draw that in too. Right, quick. And we'll just call that one done. Actually, quickly. Draw the box she's standing on.
So it looks like she's got something that she's standing on here. She is very close to the corner. Whatever. That'll do us, I think. Just a little platform for to be standing. Right. So, got a little platform. Can't see the top of this at all. Kind of acts as one straight line, pretty much. And then you see the angle on the bottom. I'll draw the sword with the left rubber. The hilt. And pommel guard is above the hand. There you go. That'll kind of, I guess, that'll kind of do us. Until the next one. On the next pose. Uh, come on. That's an interesting angle. We'll do this one next. So. From where I can see, he's primarily kind of twisted, so I'll do like um, a rough rundown of the, of the box, so it's kind of very sharp towards the bottom here. And then, so if you imagine this is also a pelvis, we'll put a pelvis in here as well. Do a tilt this way, and this goes back in the space towards that direction. And it's even sharper than that. Looks now. And then who? Uh, so I'm gonna break this down as rib cage and stuff. And we'll get in a. So now that we got that in, just plot in the legs so they kind of foreshorten because this person's jumping. So we'll do the glute into the hamstring. And then that hamstring kind of rolls forward towards the kneecap and then the kneecap slides backwards into both of them. And then we'll kind of foreshorten this as much as we can to make it look like it's going down in space as much as we can. We'll draw like a little wedge shape for the foot. And we can always come back to later if we want to refine. And then we... No, oh, that leg's wrong. So this leg is kind of, so if you imagine it's a cylinder, the surface would be underneath the horizon line. So you'd see the top of the cylinder all the way through. And then it's the same for the thigh. If you imagine it's a sideways cylinder, be the exact same. And the same for this one, except, well, you wouldn't see these cylinders anyway, realistically. <laughs> you kind of just need to pay attention to forms. We've made that foot a bit too big. Pull it back a little bit. And then we will start adding in our arms. So this this lady's got she's strong as the same lady I just drew. She's got very strong lats. And very strong shoulders. Which are coming towards the camera. So, in this shot, the I'm blanking completely on this muscle name. It's overlapping in this anyway. Trapezius muscle? 
No, that's the one on the back, I think. Right, sir, past the one. Sorry. I don't know why I blanked on that. And the forearm is also lapping. If you kind of square this off and then round it afterwards, and then you kind of get the adjust of where your elbow should lie. And then that has a tendon and the bone coming off that into the tricep. Which also goes into the underneath of the armpit with the lat. That lat needs to come forward a bit. And then you see just the side of the breast here. And then she's got a bit of stomach mass that kind of rolls down toward her hip. And then her head is... And I can't show you because it's not safe for work. That's the reason I haven't got the reference up on the screen. Not safe for work content. It'll be flagged. It's very bad line work there. So... Let's just get a little crevice for the arm. This is a straight into a... I'm going to pay really close attention to this. I think these forms are overlapping like this. That, four, that tricep is more straight. And it kind of leads into like a stump. Almost kind of like... Almost like a shoe, it almost looks like. And then you want it of the forearm overlapping, like so. And that's foreshortened in space. The hand will look like it comes out of nowhere here. Yeah. And that kind of links up back up with the forearm, which leads to the elbow. And then you can draw a straight line there to show that it's joining through the bone. That is Kind of this pose done. You won't see any of this here because she's got long hair covering it. So you don't really need to fuss over that. I'm not going to do too much detail on the face. So the side of the hand. You draw that like a cube. But you round it. And in this particular reference it kind of your hand curves from this bit and then you can see like the phalange of a thumb linking up with the wrist and then her finger all of her fingers kind of roll in space up until the pinky which kind of comes up so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to join the middle two And you're only going to see a little bit of this. Empty space. There you go. And I'll give her a little nose. So you can kind of see the perspective she's in. <laughs> and this shoulder overlaps the latissimus muscle. Because this is the rear delt, which overlaps and kind of comes into the upper back. So there. And then you'd also get a the middle uh, muscle of the delt, which leads into the trapezius muscle, which I got wrong earlier. I blanked on completely the... I thought the tricep was the trapezius. You kind of just get like a C shape there, down into the jowl of the mouth. And then, because it kind of wraps around the skull, you get a rough indication of the mouth here, but it wouldn't be much. But that's as much as I'm going to indicate. I don't need to do any more than this. The hair would, would need some work, but... That is not what I is doing today. Tis not, tis not.
likely who it is. I'm probably going to just do a voiceover for this anyway at some point. In the dead zones. So, um, yeah, so this, this pose is jumping, which is why she's kind of floating. But I think we will call this one done. We'll move on to the next image. I haven't got a particular timer on. I'm going to look for one that's on the ground. Okay, so this one's not as dynamic, but it will teach you some perspective. So the box is... I think this is kind of one point perspective. I think it is just one point perspective, but it's going. Yeah, I think it genuinely is just one point perspective. So the she would be standing inside this box. We'll make her head there, her rib cage is tilting, her pelvis is also tilting. Her Le her left leg, our right, is coming forward in space. We'll define that with an overlap. And then we will also do the same for the upper thigh on the other side. Define that with an overlap. The line weight. And then this one kind of com comes down and merges into the kneecap. Then you have a muscle from the hamstring that also rolls down from behind, but this one overlaps that. So you got to be careful to make sure that that doesn't cause confusion to the viewer. The bone here also overlaps pretty much all of the muscle here. The muscle kind of hooks more into the back of the leg towards the back of the kneecap where the tendon lies. And the foot is coming out of this box I've drawn. So I kind of just imagine the foot as a wedge. Got some weird feet. The toes are going inwards. She's wore a lot of tight shoes. Now we're going to deal with the other hip. So she is I don't think the ribcage is tilting quite that much. So what we'll do is, is we'll get the tilt. Um, I think it's more just subtle, kind of like that. And you'll see quite a bit at the side. And we'll just draw this in space. Doesn't matter what point it's going to. I think I'll just kind of eyeball there at this point. The head is probably wrong now as well. I'm going to kind of just do a concave line here for this leg. And she is looking wham here. Kind of like a cyclist. An Olympic cyclist. And then pants. And a wrap round. Which gives you good, good form lines. Which teaches you to... That is also a good thing for perspective as well initially with these gesture drawings is that you see. Okay, so here she's got some squish on this side, so I'm going to indicate that. So it squishes like that. And then the top half is another one there that rolls down and in. And then it gets really tight, kind of like a V. And then that line rolls up. Like that. To join the sports bra that she's wearing. And the side's flat. Leads into the latissimus muscle. And then that pe pectoral muscle showing in this reference. I think it goes more into the delta up here actually. Rolls up into the shoulder, which isn't showing, but I'll draw it for now. And then we have the bicep here in the in the arm. And that also joins with the tricep. Which in this case is almost just a quick 
here are lines. However, there is slight overlap coming over from the bicep. We want to be as subtle as we can with this because it's just an indication of form, not showing the full muscle. Then we'll add our elbow in, which is kind of just like a triangle in this case. And then we'll add our forearm. And then her hand is kind of massive in this scene because she's holding a sword up in front of her face. And then she has a second hand covering her forearm. Like so. And then here we'll have that forearm pretty much covers up until her left breast, our right. And this here is the forearm that kind of overlaps the bicep which recedes in space much quickly much more quickly than you'd think and then she's got her shoulder muscles and her rear delt is rolling around the front of the form and she's got a very bulging latissimus muscle on this side because this side's squishing quite a bit and then we'll have this rear delt bound uh bulging into her front and middle delt And that leads into the trapezius muscle. And then her chin kind of starts here. And then it rolls. And then we will just have a rough indication of form here for the face. I don't want to go too in depth on faces here. Gotta put in a leg. Just quickly. You're looking like a chicken. Give me one second. I need to fix that. bone comes this kind of curves towards this direction she's not quite that big yeah there you go I'll do and then we'll draw like triangle into our wedge shape into her little toes I'll do for now. And then I'll put in my overlaps again. I needed to refix that. After judging it, she looked... That leg looked too small. And the perspective is going to be a little off now. I've done it too... Um, too small. The box in the background was too small. For the actual pose. But it is still the correct perspective. It's just this these vertical lines come down further. To make this box that she stood in. We'll just kind of eyeball in the foot. And then we get a little belly button. We'll have a little bit of overlap for the muscles in the stomach. And we'll have another one here. And one more day. And then we'll draw in her brassiere. And the underneath of her arm, which joins into the, into the rear delt. Is, I think, a little bit bigger than that. I think it's more like that. Yeah, it could be strong here. Into this V-shaped roll I drew earlier. So I'm just observing before laying in any strokes. That's all the latissimus muscle. Tricep and the delt separate in different directions. One goes under towards the latissimus, and one goes around the shoulder bone. Um, and we've got a little 
little, in, little indication of the delt, the rear delt join in here. This kind of form is like that, and we'll just scribble all that in. Show some value or something. A little bit more of this. Have the hand kind of tilt a little bit because it is tilting slightly, and that bit already kind of protrudes anyway. <laughs> This brush is not good for drawing hands. It's too heavy on one side. Triangles, triangles, triangles. Thumb. And she has, you're never going to guess it, big sword in front of her face, which comes down this direction. Pommel comes back here, the hill rather, not the pommel. That'll do us. Add a little, add a little indication. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> just realized I've been saying little. Uh... There you go. That'll do us. The next one. Okay, so this next one is a bit more difficult. It's a worm's eye view, so if we take this, this is our canvas. She is kind of leaning down on the scene. So our perspective line would be like up here real realistically. Our horizon line, our perspective line. Would be up there. Yeah. I'll go to the side as a reference. <laughs> so now it doesn't quite aggressively the chest doesn't aggressively tilt like I had it. Uh there's a little bit of twisting at the hip. So I'm gonna indicate that. With a curvature in the queue in a, in our torso, uh, perspective kind of goes downwards towards the right, and it keeps doing the same thing on the other side. This twist can come forward now. I'm kind of gonna just expand the ribs, and you can see the top of this as well. Right now, I'm just going to quickly knock in this leg. Right, my wedge shape that comes towards the canvas is going to look huge. And the other leg starts roughly there. Goes back in space. Make sure that we keep everything looking fairly square and then we can just kind of indicate that leg with some value and the same with this one and this brush is good for shadow mapping because you can use the the soft side of the brush or, so there's a hard side and a soft side, look. Which is good for shadow mapping. And her head looks fairly big in this scene. We'll use the simple cylinder method for this. Um, her elbow is tilted back in space, so you can see neither the top or bottom plane. 
same for a forearm. Right up until the wrist where you get to see the underneath. And her forearms are particularly strong, so you don't see the elbow bone sticking through. We'll have this hand tilt in this way. Thumb comes directly pretty much from the wrist in comparison to all the other bones of the hand. So... I don't know how to explain that really, but the the bones of the hand are like mixed up in the in the wrist, and then all the fingers joint from that. However, th there's just like a single knuckle in the wrist built for the thumb. This lady's always carrying a weapon. these poses so I don't like how I've drawn that though so I'm gonna redo it so I'm just gonna block in my rib cage for this one I think rough idea of a rib cage this bit is squishing because she's twisting this side kind of goes out and over and then you see the the oblique not quite that big there you go and then that joins the leg and this joins the underway a very hot pose. I need to get more practice in on these dynamic angles. Your chest. Should, this all needs to be bigger. This top half needs to be leaning forward more. So what I'll do is, is I'll just lasso tool this, twist it, make it bigger. Big it again. Big it again. Bigger again. Touch smaller. I'll do this nicely. However, that head is now the wrong angle. Okay, there you go. What happens to all of us. There's no need to feel bad if you can't get a pose down first time. That is the one very good thing about digital tools. So you don't need to stress out about making mistakes. This canvas may be white, there's no need to be scared of it. Just simply make mistakes, learn. That's how you learn, is just by making mistakes over and over and over again. Until one day you just become a professional artist. That earns an annual salary, a salary from your drawings. So, this wrist kind of overlaps from here. And then this concaves in the center. Right, now we'll do this side of the torso. Because there's some important overlaps here. So this is kind of similar to the last pose. It's just latissimus muscle joining. Because she's so big, it kind of squeezes everything else and I don't mean bigger than uh, chubby I just mean she's like got lots of muscle and then this pinches here and then rolls forward in space and then the pants go backwards and we'll have the hand coming forward this bit for the thumb this the wrist Joins here. I think what I'll do is, is I'll quickly block this in shadow. 
you shouldn't see that much of that arm. And I just draw that backwards. He's smiling a little bit, but like a maniacal smile. And eyebrows. One stroke. She doesn't look angry, but... Big triangle for her here. And it goes backwards into a bunch of bumps. Into a year. Into a year. And then her hair kind of just rolls down. Let me vent this a little bit here. And this bit is like a big. Almost like a pyramid shape. And then she's got another one there that joins into a curl. And then her face is more angled than that. And the ears and there is more here. We'll keep the space here dark. And the trap. Like I said before, she is very muscular. I think that, that head now looks strange. It is coming from wooden space, but it doesn't look like it in my drawing. I'm going to just quickly block in a rough shadow map for this entire thing. I'm just tapping lightly, keeping my brush big, get rid of all the construction lines I used earlier. Round out the form, and then we just indicate. So this kind of rolls down and round. Can't get it with this brush. I'll just do the upper stroke I wanted to do originally, and then go over the underneath. Not that dark. I'll draw the bar again. Okay. Right. Well, I think that's the that's kind of this part done. This does roll in front on the trees yet this massive here. Didn't realise quite how bad it looked. And this shoulder is up more. That's what the problem's been. There is a little flash of light on this shoulder behind this. And this bit here is one of the darkest because it's getting covered by the body. Not as dark as this area. And then we'll do some of the important forms on this leg. Which is just pretty much just shallow S curve into an upside down C curve. Which then goes into a rough shadow shape on the ankle into the foot.
whatever. That pose can do. Entire side of this face in shadow. Even the forehead. Light bit of shadow there. What I'm gonna do is press quite hard here. And we'll just do some indication. And then pop a light there. And this is still quite dark. I'll indicate an eye there too. And then underneath the nostrils are oh, don't really show anything. Still very dark. The nose is actually one of the light areas. We'll have a little bit of shadow here on this side of the nose. Indicate that with one simple downward stroke into an upward curved stroke for this little bump here. And then I think we'll just block in a shadow color for the hair. Starting off a leg here, just because I like the dy dynamism of this leg. Probably shouldn't do that much there. Curvature of this muscle here on this lady. And then into a wedge shape for the knee, into the leg. I'm gonna go with pelvis. So she's kind of curving like this. Almost into a into a backward stance.
Right. Uh, we'll add a little belly button into the app. We'll have a little thing there. Add the sports bra over. Because believe it or not, this is still the same person. I might have gone too, too far on the old Jordan not itself. Although, I could have just called it style if I wanted to. The hand's too big now too. Let's drag it back. A bit more. That'll do me. There you go. Deselect. Deselect. Um. However, now this bit is not in the right place. It's showing an awful lot more. I think I've got the angle wrong on this elbow. This entire arm is wrong angle for this reference. Tilt it. Like that. Yeah. About this line. You select. Good. Over. I don't know what this is. This arm doing yet. Yeah. I can only see the overlap of the forearm on the bicep instead of the bicep over the forearm. her breast in here, where it's kind of going back in space, and joins here into this. So warm. Like a so. Make that head bigger. Make this body. So what happens when you start the leg too big? I'll do this. My legs still look weird now. It's not wrong, I don't think, judging by what I've drawn. Just in the wrong place. But there, perhaps. Sometimes it is just a matchup. Just catching their mistakes earlier on in this process rather than when you're doing an illustration for a client and you don't realize and then you've got wonky proportions it's a very hard pose to draw it's hard to draw that all in back motion she's done. Realistically, I should do another pass over this. Because this. All the proportions are all over the place for this drawing. I want to take another crack at it. Real quick, I'll do a quick version. No detail. Okay, so the hip is up on this side, but only slightly. Not quite that aggressive. Like that, yeah. 
the head is. I'm gonna draw a cube for the head here. Back in space like that. Like so. We have our middle line there. You can see the top of the head in this reference, not the good line. That's there. Suppose it's hard because she's she's twisting as well. So her abdomen, her, this entire side of it is twisting this direction. So I can curve the lat. I could try this. Just curve the lat like so, and then kind of twist everything downwards. But you would see the app plane here everything on this side. We'll just do two. The arms, I don't want to get too mad again. In the previous example, I went... I like that dynamic leg. And I should have just left it. Should have just gone for simpler. And started with the torso first. Gives me the right proportions, the right body angles, everything. That's too small for this now. Make me slightly bigger. I don't know if it is that is the case. Yeah, it is. Okay. Let me just join that in. I'll join here. Just join this A. One comes down. And then the chest muscle into a boob. I say poor kind of just joint together, I don't know. This kind of rolls forward in space, this leg. So if you draw that contour line like I did, it might make things like this perspective a little bit easier if you want legs. If you imagine you got a wedge going this way to the right, this goes into here, this rolls over. Not quite that aggressive in this roll, however. And the bone curve. This way, click. And we have our muscles kind of joining on. Side. And we'll give it a hop for that. Ah, uh, rough indication of the foot. Extremely good practice though, of how hard this pose is.
figure. Mm. Oh, this is awkward. Just when I think I got the right proportions. That'll do it. Alright, anyway, that's that done. That's my reference Wednesday. Done. And if you made it to the end of the video, which if you did, I'd be very surprised, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you just chilled and watched or listened while you did some drawing yourself. That's what it's there for at the end of the day. Um, another video coming on Saturday with three-point perspective and potentially uh, a little bit of character drawing in that episode too. Anyway, peace out. Thanks for watching.